Hey everybody, I'm Matt from the Creator Team and you're watching our weekly workshop. This week, I want to show you how to take form data and access and store that data in your page's controller and then send that data to another page via our route parameters function. Now, you can also edit this data along the way or store it in a database, but in this video, I just want to show you how to get the data from the form into your controller and then pass it to another page using Creator. So let's get started by just creating a new project here and we're going to call this project form data. And we're just gonna make it blank. We're not gonna make this one like look crazy good. I just wanna show you guys the code functionality behind all this. So now that we've got a page, uh, let's make a pizza ordering uh, application here. So let's do order your pizza as the title of this page. And we're gonna start off just building our form. So the first thing we're gonna want is a select box that is the size of our pizza. And we're gonna populate the data for the select box later dynamically from a list of options in our controller. And then let's do a toggle. And we're gonna have that toggle be for extra cheese. Then let's switch it up a little bit here and make a topping uh, radio control. So you're gonna be able to choose one out of two toppings. So our first topping here is going to be pepperoni. Pepperoni. And we can duplicate that and call it sausage. And then at the end of the day, you know, a lot of these applications have notes that you can send to the driver. So let's just create an input here. And so people can leave a note to get their pizza ordered. Now, uh, you know, we preview this, the form works, you know, you can choose different things, you can type a note, but this data isn't stored anywhere yet. So we're gonna wanna open up our code editor here. And this is the controller for our order a pizza page. Okay, so the first thing let's do is rig up that size dropdown to a set of dynamic options. So we're gonna do scope.sizes equal a list. And we're gonna have three options in here. Each one is gonna have an ID. So for this one, it's gonna be lowercase small and a label that we can show in the box. So for that one, we'll do an uppercase small. And then we're gonna take this and copy it and change it a little bit for our other options. So we'll do medium, medium, large, and large. Now we also need a place to actually store the value that's selected for all of our form items. So let's do scope.data equals an object. And we're gonna start off just with size equal to, and we're gonna set this to scope.sizes0.id. So this is actually gonna be set, this code right here is gonna be set to the ID of our first option, which is small. So that kind of just lets us set an automatic default to whatever the first option in this list is. So now we need to populate that into our actual size dropdown. And for that, we're gonna use two different directives. The first directive is a standard ng model where we are gonna set that to data.size. Okay, so we're gonna set that directly to this variable. And that's what's gonna let store the current value. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is do ng options. Now, ng options is a little bit weird, okay? so. You can look up the documentation on the Angular documentation for ng options, but it's a little bit complex. So I'm gonna take you through a couple different steps to get this working. So the first thing we're gonna do is just size in sizes, okay? It's like a standard for loop, but that doesn't give this enough information to actually generate. So like if I try to preview this, it's definitely not going to work. We're not gonna get any options because this is not a complete quote unquote sentence that ng options is expecting. So what we're actually going to set this in is we are going to have to give it a value uh, to store, so the lowercase id, and then what to display in the option. So that would be the uh, size.label. So we're gonna do size.id as size.label for size in sizes is our complete sentence here. And once we get that whole sentence, when we preview it, we can see it defaulted to small, just like we told it to, and we now have small, medium, and large right in this text box. And all those work dynamically. Now, just to prove that this data is actually getting stored in the controller, let's throw a paragraph under our form here, just to show this data as we go. So we're gonna show size as data.size. And if we preview again, Okay, we can see we're at small, we're at medium, that updated to medium on the fly, we're at large, that updated to large on the fly. So far, so good. So let's move on to the extra cheese. This is just gonna be a Boolean, okay? So this one's a lot easier. We can just do uh, extra cheese is equal to false. And then on this extra cheese, you're just gonna wanna add an ng model to be uh, data.extra cheese. Okay, and then down here, we'll make sure we can preview it. Extra cheese, data.extra cheese. To make sure it's getting stored there. And we can preview that. 
save our code changes. And now we can change this to a large or a medium. We can toggle it on and we see true. Now we see false there. It automatically updated for us. All right, cool. So let's do, let's see here. Okay, next up we're gonna do that topping. So for the topping, we are going to set topping equal to pepperoni by default, okay? Now for this to work, we also need two different directives on each of our uh, options here. So we're gonna add a directive for ng model is equal to data.topping. So we're just gonna tie the current value, either pepperoni or sausage, to that model. Then we're gonna add another one. This one's a little bit weird. This is ng-value, okay? And here we want an actual string, so you have to encase this in quotes. The word pepperoni. If we don't encase it in quotes, it's gonna look for a scope variable instead of like the raw value pepperoni, okay? We're gonna do that same thing to sausage. So ng model is equal to data.topping and ng value is equal to the string sausage. Okay, so for this one, since we have topping set to pepperoni, it should default to pepperoni being checked and then we should be able to change it from pepperoni to sausage. Uh, so just to make sure that works, let's add topping, data.topping to our preview here. Preview that, save our code changes. Okay, we can see here, uh, now why didn't it do it automatically here? Pepperoni. Okay, pepperoni, preview. There we go, okay, so pepperoni, sausage, and it switches between the two, okay? Now, next up, let's get this note just stored as a string. So here we're gonna do note as an empty string. Okay, and we are gonna throw an ng model equals data.note. Then we're gonna preview that. Yes, save the changes. Okay, whoops, we didn't actually save the change. We didn't put a note here. So let's do data.note here, just so we can preview it again. So save, boom. All right, so let's change it to large, updates to large. Extra cheese, cool. Sausage, note, testing, one, two, three. So all of that information is now stored on our scope. So now that it's stored on our scope, we actually have access to this through a variety of means. Okay, so first of all, let's create a scope.order function. And here, I'm just gonna do a console log. So we're gonna do console.log, order a scope.data.size, pizza with the topping plus scope.data.topping. Okay, so we're just gonna do a simple scope thing here. We're gonna drag over a button and make that button do an ng click order. Now, with our new code previewing here, if we inspect this, okay, what we actually do for you is we get rid of all the console logs from creator so we clear it out for you whenever you preview. And then we only show you the logs that you've logged. So you can console log away, console info, all this debugging has now come a lot easier. Okay, so we're gonna do large, extra cheese, sausage, testing, one, two, three, tap me, and we get order a large pizza with a topping sausage. Awesome. But now let's actually take this data and send it to a second page using our route parameters. So we're gonna create a new blank page. And this page we are gonna call uh, order confirmation. Okay, and in order confirmation, we're gonna add a route parameter for each of our different things. So size, extra cheese, topping, and note. Okay, so all four of those are stored. Now what we can do is go back to our button, unlink the ng click, so we no longer want it working with that function. Instead, we're gonna use our default linking mechanism up here, and it's gonna ask us for the four separate route parameters. Now, you could just type regular things, like we could pass small to this, okay? But we wanna pass that dynamic value. So we're gonna do the template tags data.size. And for each one, we're gonna put the corresponding variable. And it's gonna send all that data straight to our second page. But we haven't done anything with it on the second page yet. So let's go to our second page controller here. Set up scope.data here. And all of these state params are stored in this state params object. So we can go size is equal to state params dot size. Uh, and here, you know what, let's full screen this again. Okay, and let's do extra cheese is state params dot extra cheese. Let's do topping is state params dot topping. 
and then let's do note is state params dot note. All right, and just for ease of use here, let's just throw in data so we can preview that whole option. So now we go back to order our pizza. We're going to save our code, preview this, and we're going to change it to large, extra cheese, sausage, testing, one, two, three, tap me, and we're going to go to that order confirmation page with all of our default stuff right here. So all of that information was passed to the page through the button. Now let's say you wanted to modify that data or you just wanted to do it via code instead of through our default system. We allow that too. So on this button, let's not link it anymore and let's go back to our ng click on that order function. Okay, but instead of doing this console log, we're actually going to want to use state. So let's inject state into our controller. We're going to do state.go. Uh, here we're going to need a value for that page, the, what it needs to go to. But first we're just going to throw scope.data in there. Uh, because size extra cheese topping note is the same as what the page wants for its route parameters, I'm just going to pass scope.data directly just to be easier. Now, like I said, we need to tell it where to go. That's the state sref that we added to every page now. So this value can be used with state.go, UI sref, everything like that. So we're going to copy this and we're going to put it here and save. And we're going to get that same effect that we had before, where if I, you know, change this to a medium sausage, put some stuff here and hit tab, we're going to go to that second page with the information we have. We just did it via code instead of a button now. So, you know, if you wanted to modify any of the stuff like right here, you could add something to the note, you could add a, another parameter that you've hidden from these, you could do whatever you want, and then send that data to a page instead of just linking it straight from the button. So overall, that's how you get this form data into your controller and how you can kind of work with it. Uh, like I said, we're going to be doing these weekly workshops every single week. Next week, you can be on a lookout for the Ionic Auth video. I will catch you then.